In my previous video, I had uploaded about a protest on the banning of people living and sleeping in their vehicles here in Vancouver. And here's some of the clips of that. Oh, okay, they have a name for it, RV City. Making it effectively illegal to be living in a vehicle. The only way to respond and heed to the city's bylaws is to disappear into thin air. The absolute minimum that the city can do uh, is to stop enforcing bylaws against people whose vehicles are their homes. And of course that means uh, not displacing and threatening people with tickets and towing just because... But today we are going to post the rest of the videos that I captured on the crackdown here on van life, RV life, and sleeping in vehicles. And somewhere in this video, I had captured a confrontation between a van lifer and some of the locals. And also on this protest was a blockade of one of the major city streets here to protest living in a vehicle or sleeping overnight in a vehicle, RV, car, camper, van whatever have it so check out today's video and yeah comment away what do you think is this going to happen and occur in other cities uh, from my understanding it's happening here in cities surrounding vancouver here in british columbia cities like victoria squamish where we're going next weekend and surrey so check this out check it out Okay, the current speaker is kind of a soft-spoken guy. You can't really hear him. Uh, their chant is, the city of Vancouver hates us, we won't go, or something like that. Hold on, I have to figure that out. And of course the city of Vancouver hates you, because you know what? We're not paying the high taxes that a lot of these million-dollar houses here um, are paying. And you know what? Who the hell can pay? A million dollars for a house I don't think there's any uh, houses in Vancouver under a hundred or under uh, one million dollars uh, you can find condos for maybe half a million but even that is is crazy and the prices are going up every day okay he said that cities run by money and the development community or developers which is true he's true it's all money. Greed. How about coffee? <laughs> uh, feed my addiction. Actually, the girl is a good speaker.
now they're picking on the mayor. <laughs> mayor hating the poor. Okay, we gotta change positions. So I think this kid last speaker is right. You're gonna see more protests like this as housing prices go up, which, as I said, continuously happens. So I think you're gonna see more protests like this, maybe in other cities, maybe in other areas of Vancouver. So, uh, yeah. Okay, they're making their way to the intersection and the coppers are getting on their bikes. Uh, I guess the coppers are going to be there to block off the intersection. Uh, let's see. the. Oh, police are just here to make sure everybody's safe, they said. So let's see what begins of this. It's interesting. A lot of... See, but this is... Oh. <laughs> I want to get the Oh, things are rolling now And if you take it, all the land we're living on is not ours. This is all indigenous, native property. And British, us, took it over and evicted all the natives off of their own land. Put them on reserves. So, yeah, what do you say about that, right? Mayor Kennedy hates the poor! So I wonder how long they're going to blockade the... Uh, I'm going around the car. <laughs> you know, if it does get bigger and stuff like this gains momentum, the government of Canada and everything has nothing to do but to take notice of this and make a change. And maybe this is the start of it. Gotta watch out, don't get run over by a train, Chuck. Oh yeah, police blocked off this intersection and the other intersection, so. So this will be interesting to see how long they last before they get kicked off. Uh, that's true. What is it? Wednesday? Five, six o'clock? So they're going to have more speakers right in the middle of the street here, so that's cool. Yeah. Hell no, we won't go! Hell no, we won't go! Right on, so uh, I'm going to invite Cetra to speak, um, who lives in a van. <laughs> this is hilarious, actually. One of the busiest, busier streets in this area of town, and they've taken over the middle of this street. So. And the thing is, we need to help each other out in hard time, right? Yeah, I agree with him. A lot of people are struggling and we need to help each other out. So instead of just pushing us underneath the carpet, 
The mayor needs to find a solution, not trying to cover problems. And that's why I, I'm only saying really short that, you know, clean up the mess. Because the more mess that you put underneath the carpet, the more dirt is going to build up. Thank you. Thank you, Setra. Uh, so, uh, Wanda and Allie are here, uh, who are members of the Wally, People's, uh, Wally Street Council, uh, which is a grassroots organization of unhoused and homeless people in Surrey. Uh, they're here out in solidarity, and uh, they're going to tell you. The Liberal Great Alliance uh, Center outside during winter hours, or during the winter season. You know, we need some more help for the homeless and support, because there's a lot of mental health out there too right now due to COVID and there's not a lot of support and there's solutions to everything in this world. As long as people are willing to help with the solution, help the people, let them feel comfortable, let them feel safe. All my relations. Hands up! Hands up! So I'll have to do a part two video and show what some of the news reports on this are. So. Uh, in solidarity, and I'm going to invite Thomas One, Smith. two. Hello. Um, yeah, so we're just up around the vehicle residence of Squamish, and we've been battling a bylaw that will outlaw sleeping your vehicle for the last two years. And unfortunately, last night, the district of Squamish passed this bylaw, so now it's illegal to sleep in a vehicle. Um, I've been living in a van for 25 years. It's a mixture of choice and also financial, but it, for me, it's, it's definitely like, I really enjoy living in a vehicle. Um, I know that there's a lot of different people that live in vehicles and for different reasons. And I think all of these reasons are valid and they need to be acknowledged with inclusive solutions and not exclusive policies. Shame on the district of Squamish for using tourists as an excuse to clean up the streets from people that live in vehicles. Shame on them. Hey, that's where we're going this weekend to live in the back of my car. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry to camp in the back of my car, so it's illegal. So maybe I'll get ticketed. Also, uh, the city of Vancouver for uh, for doing this. Um, I am here with you. <laughs> and so we see that municipalities across the province are passing bylaws that criminalize poverty. Uh, it's illegal uh, to sleep in a vehicle in Surrey as well. Um, and these bylaws are just filling the gap. Of That's the, true, uh, sir. You can't live in an RV or a van anymore. Um, uh, they put a law on that. And I'm uh, sure it's so coming to Vancouver by the, the looks of things. Widens, what do governments do? They just make it more and more difficult to just live and be poor to the point where you're not even allowed to sleep. Shame! Shame! Uh, next we have Che speak. Um, and if there's anybody else here who wants to say a message of solidarity, uh, come and find me. Hi there, my name is Che, that's my word name, nickname. I come from the Amazon, I'm born and raised in the cradle of evolution. At the time, they call it revolution, okay? We have to evolve. Mr. Kennedy, or shall we call him a steward, needs to speak to enlightened minds. Because here we see, I have done letters of love for change downtown inside. You can look on the web page, CDC, twice. I have seen people die quite a bit. I pray, I cry, I try to do my best with what I have. And I meet people on the way to the grave. Witnessing what I seen made me change my heart and I decided to just remain there and inquire how best can we help. The only thing She has a good point and I got a story about that. If we could hold transparency if in another we could use episode that as the lighting guide to take back what belongs to us because Caesar has their portion, but we haven't got it. Jesus died for me so that I will have life here and after. And every bit 
a slap he took while one was for me, the other one for you. Oh, so that when now we got religion in on it. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. We shall stand. But not me to judge. To because <clears throat> you already did it. So that's my message. Thank you. Thank you, right. Shay. Uh, it would be wonderful if the city of Vancouver could be transparent and just say that they want poor people to disappear into thin air rather than concocting these flimsy narratives about the horrors of there being personal possessions on sidewalks or beside sidewalks. Uh, and uh, they've, they've come out and say that they're not going to be cracking down on individual RVs parks, just the encampments, uh, which is an attack on the, on the community of poor people. It's an attack on poor and indigenous people's social relations, the same way that SROs, like Todd said, are graveyards and coffins. These measures that criminalize poverty, what they functionally do is try to stop working class and indigenous people from getting organized to change this bullshit. It's what keeps the status quo in place, is people being disorganized and not being able uh, to get together and press on the government to make basic changes. Even a child can figure out that if you want to end the housing crisis, you build housing. That's it. Whose streets? Our streets. Whose streets? Our streets. Hell no, we won't go. Hell no, we won't go. Mayor Kenny hates the poor. and make our way back up slow camp. So uh, we won't go in the back. And well, they didn't uh, hold it up very long. So I thought they'd be here for a while. So that's good. I can go home and get some sleep. <laughs> Poor people under attack. What do we do? Yeah. Okay, some of the locals. <laughs> fighting back. Where do you live, asshole? Where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? <laughs> the neighbors are, and some of the van lifers are fighting out here. All right, it's getting better. I should be on the other side of the street. Ah, uh, oh, darn. Keep saying the same thing over again. Take your shit and get out of here. And as I said, you can see how busy it is normally. It's like a constant stream of traffic, so 
they blocked it off for a short time. I was expecting an hour or more, but surprise, surprise. Kids, I think that's enough for me today. I'm gonna go get ready for work tonight, and I have to think this over and come back with an ending. So, uh, but man, I love that band. That looks good. If you've made it this far in the video, I gotta say thanks very much for watching, for checking us out. Uh, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen with van life, living in a vehicle, RV, whatever you have it here in Vancouver area. I think it's just getting overrun with too many RVers making a mess, making it ugly. Like what the saying is, the few always mess it up for the many. So... What do we got coming for you? Uh, I'm gonna lay off the van life thing for a little bit. We're preparing right now to change vehicles. We're gonna drop off this car, jump into her daughter's other, her daughter's car, and we're gonna do a car camping trip up in Whistler. And I'm hoping to take some mountain biking in around the Whistler area and uh, North Squamish, I guess. Very beautiful scenery. You got a lot of beautiful stuff to see coming up. So my friends, until those videos coming up, hey, you know what? Thanks for being here with me for this long time. A couple years now. Wow. I'm on my fifth year YouTube. So thanks for being awesome and you continue staying awesome. We'll see you next time. And cheers.